All right, hello everybody. My name is Adam Bastos. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm an Android developer here at Raise Labs, and uh, today I'm going to be telling you why you should consider writing your Android apps using the Kotlin programming language. Uh, Kotlin's a programming language that compiles to JVM bytecode, so it's basically just like using Java. Um, so why use it? Java is fine, right? Um, well, the problem is that Java 6 is what we're stuck with on Android. Um, and it's almost 10 years old at this point, uh, and a lot of cool stuff has uh, happened in those last 10 years. Things like nullables, lambdas, a lot of languages have these cool features, and we're stuck without them. Um, Java is also very verbose, um, just words all over the place. Uh, and the framework, the Android framework, um, follows suit and is also very verbose. Um, a lot of that is because there's so many asynchronous calls, which means you've got a lot of uh, runnables and callbacks and listeners and this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and all, all, all that is just so much code. Um, uh, and also, Android loves to throw on nulls. Um, and those are great, but uh, if you're not keeping track of them, uh, you can get in trouble. Uh, and these are all problems that Kotlin as a language is really designed around mi helping to mitigate. Uh, so I'd like to go into some of the basic, some of the benefits of Kotlin's basic syntax. Uh, here we have some declarations. Um, and there's a couple of things you can note here. Uh, one is the val keyword replaces the word final if you want to make a, a variable immutable. Uh, it's a good idea to do that, um, but no one's going to do it if it's an extra word like final. Um, oop, that's the wrong button. Uh, if you're using a constructor, you don't need the new keyword. Um, and also, you only need to specify types um, if you're initializing to null. Otherwise, it'll infer the type. Um, if you're initializing to null, you also need to mark it nullable, which we'll come back to in a moment. Um, if you'd like to declare a method, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but it, it, I have an example here of a one-line function. And if you have a one-line function in Kotlin, you can literally make it just the one line. And again, the type, of the return type of that function is being inferred. Um, so uh, Kotlin's uh, type system actually includes nullability as a core part of it. Um, and you can declare any, uh, um, any variable as nullable by throwing a question mark on the end of its type. Um, if you don't do this, then the compiler will actually block you from assigning null to it. Uh, if you do do it, then the compiler will block you from using that variable unless you've wrapped it in a check. Um, and if you just want to do one thing with that variable, you don't need to use if not null. You could just uh, put the uh, question mark operator on the end of it, um, and it will uh, just not execute it if, the, uh, if it is null. Um, so hopefully the benefits of the syntax are starting to come out a little bit already, so we'll move on to some more advanced features, for example, lambdas. Um, so a lambda is uh, a good example of when you would use a lambda is if you were starting a thread with an anonymous runnable. Uh, so here it is written in Kotlin the way you would with Java. Um, literally, you're just defining an object that extends runnable. Um, and here it is with a lambda. Um, four lines of ceremony became two, um, and now all you're left with is the useful content. Um, here's a comparison against some actual Java code. So let's say you have a progress bar with those little spinny things that let you, lets you know that something's happening in the background. You want to fade it out, um, and then you want to set its visibility to gone so the framework doesn't keep rendering it. Um, look how much code that is just for two very basic things. Um, with Kotlin and a Lambda, boom, it's down to three lines. Um, so uh, another useful function or feature is uh, extension functions. Uh, a lot of languages have this type of thing now, uh, but an extension function basically lets you add uh, add methods to a class that you didn't write. Um, and to define one is very similar to any other function. You just prefix the uh, function name with the type that you want to extend. Uh, and note that within the body there, uh, we're calling ends with just as if we were inside that class. We don't have to call string dot ends with. Um, and then when we want to actually use that uh, f function, it's just like calling any other public method on string. So it really looks like it's just something that came with it um, and you didn't have to do any hacks to make it happen. Um, so Kotlin actually lets you write functions that take as an argument another function, right? Um, it's uh, a, fun a feature that we call higher order functions. Uh, it's really powerful. Um, so let let's say you have some potentially unsafe operation um, that you want to call a lock before you do it, and then you have to make sure that you call unlock afterwards. Um, and you don't want to have to remember to do those things every single time. Um, so you can see here where we've defined a, f a function uh, that has body as a function type argument. You can tell because it's got the arrow um, in its uh, type indicator. Um, so uh, we've defined this as a uh, higher order function, uh, and then we're going to define 
some non-thread safe operation uh, that we want to throw in there. Um, and now when we call it, uh, we just use the function reference operator. It might be a bit tough to see, it's a pair of colons. Um, and it's just like passing anything else in there. Now the other option we have is we could pass in a lambda. Um, and Kotlin has a convention where if the last uh, argument of a function is a function uh, and you're passing it uh, as a lambda, uh, if you're resolving that as a lambda, you can actually put the braces outside of the parentheses. Um, and so what that does is create, we've created something that looks kind of like a new keyword. It kind of looks like a synchronized keyword. Um, and that opens up all types of possibilities for ways you can kind of create your own DSLs, uh, domain specific languages, uh, if that's actually what it stands for, oops. Um, you, you basically create y y your own modifications to, or not really modifications, but it looks like additions to the language um, and it's just there for the taking. Um, so we come back to the question of why you should consider learning a new language. Um, so Kotlin has a lot of features that are designed basically to make it easy to write expressive code that makes more sense on a first read. Um, and a lot of that is because you're just writing less code. Um, and that makes it easier for other people to read that code and for, or, or you to read that code and for other people to re uh, review it. Um, also, you have to try really hard actually to write a null pointer exception in Kotlin. Uh, most of the time, if you ever do, it's usually in your remaining Java code. Uh, and that brings us to, to Java interoperability, which I didn't really cover at all um, because Kotlin is designed to, to work completely transparently with Java. You can call any Java code and vice versa. Uh, and it's, it, is actually so simple that talking about it's like really boring. So that's why I didn't really touch on it. Um, it just compiles to Java by, to JVM bytecode, um, so it just works transparently. Um, so maybe I've sold you. You, you want to give it a shot. You're wondering how to get started. Uh, well, if you use IntelliJ, uh, version 15 uh, has Kotlin support built in. Uh, for earlier versions, you can grab a plugin. Uh, here are some other resources you can take a look at to kind of start learning about the language. Uh, the one that I recommend, especially if you're not so sold on it, uh, is that last one, uh, which is a t uh, an article written by Jake Wharton of Square, uh, where he compares Kotlin to a bunch of other languages uh, like Scala, Ruby, uh, Java 8, um, regarding things like the method count of the standard uh, runtime library, uh, the uh, resulting bytecode from, uh, uh, from using the languages. Uh, it's a really great quick read, it goes very in depth, um, and it's also pretty easy to find on Google if you didn't get that link. Um, so that's it. Uh, thanks for your time. Hopefully uh, you guys will give it a, uh, give Kotlin a shot and enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you.